Do you know what it takes to get a custom prosthetic arm for mountain biking? On this episode, I'll show you what it took to get mine. Welcome to No Front Brakes, where missing a hand doesn't mean I'm missing out on bikes. Quick rewind to the beginning of me on bikes. Like a dummy, I thought I should be riding a mountain bike with one hand. Then I started this YouTube channel and I met Aaron, who made my first prosthetic in like 25 years. I rode for a few years with it and I quickly realized that it wouldn't work if I wanted to hit some sweet jumps. Then I tried using some rubber bands and zip ties, but that was suboptimal and there were times where I wrecked and I couldn't get away from my bike, leaving me with some sick road rash. And then within the last six months, my old prosthetic was getting harder and harder to click in and lock. So I had a consultation with Hanger Clinic. They said it was still in fact working, but my arm changed shape. So the only option for me was to get a new prosthetic. If you're at all familiar with health insurance in the US, it's complicated and there's a lot of BS. Hanger Clinic needed an actual script to work with my insurance. So I got a prescription, who sent it back to Hanger, but it wasn't worded correctly. So I went back to my doctor, made sure it said exactly what it needed to. Then Hanger Clinic can send it to insurance for pre-authorization. One problem though, the Merck's hands attachment that I wanted is activity specific. Hanger Clinic told me to write a letter to my insurance telling them that it was necessary to keep the YouTube dough rolling in. There isn't any. And highlight the difference a mountain biking prosthetic has made in my life. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> insurance denied it. So I have to pay for the attachment out of pocket. But they did approve the main prosthetic. If you're paying attention, I'm now on my fourth appointment. I put on a liner and then the doctor wrapped it in cellophane to compress my skin and simulate the pressure of a prosthetic. It has to be snug. Next is a really thin sock and the doctor makes marks with a sharpie to mark where certain bones and muscles are in my arm. Next is wrapping a gauze that's basically like a cast so they can make a mold for the prosthetic. After a few minutes, it hardens up. Here you can see the inside where they mark the sock at different points. And here's the liner. It's a buffer against my skin and basically something like a wetsuit. This one is way thicker and more spongy than my previous one. The first prototype appointment. From the cast they made a clear plastic version of the prosthetic. It's pretty crazy that it stays on there already just by gripping my condyle. The condyle is a little bump on the bottom of the humerus, on the inside of the elbow. She's pushing on different parts to see if there are any spots where it's too much pressure. There was one spot on the end and then she also made a mark to flare out the elbow a little bit so it didn't rub me. Next she made a mark where the thread from the end of the liner would go. Bike test appointment. Time to bring my bike in. First we put the receiving cup on the bike. It looks like this. Next we put the liner and the second prototype on my arm. It now has a quick release button and a temporary wrist. Then the doctor measured my existing forearm and figured out how far off the end the actual wrist needs to be. She used tape to secure the frame to the prototype and then they pop riveted the frame to it. Next I sat over the bike and popped it in. Made some more adjustments, put the seat up and with a little track stand assistance I can tell that this is going to be amazing. Pop it out but I have to be gentle a bit to not break the prototype. The handoff appointment. Getting the final product. It's a little bulkier than my last one and I'm not really sold on the button being looser but I'm going to give it a shot. On the way out was payment. This part hurts. The prosthetic itself ended up being less than 500 bucks with insurance. Not too bad considering this is a one of a kind thing. But the attachment ended up being $5,200. See everything in the US medical system is done by code. So even though the attachment from Mert's hands is $2,100, the price I paid was over 5K. It is what it is because I can already tell this is going to be way better for riding than my last one. I still have to improve the cockpit by adding a new grip. I matched the bike this time and picked out an obnoxious green one. There's a problem with the prosthetic though. The quick release button is attached to the inner rubber liner, not the carbon part. So as I'm riding, the liner flexes, goes beneath the carbon, gets pressed, and my arm pops out. I dropped it off to get reworked. Three weeks later. Okay, so it's way better. Exactly what I needed and my arm stays in. I'm still a little squirrely from having all of that extra range of motion, so I'm going to have to get used to not having my arm basically secured at one angle permanently to the bars. Both of these prosthetics have basically changed my life. Hanger Clinic did an amazing job hearing my use case 
and making something completely custom that enables me to ride bikes and ultimately to make videos and share them with you. And now I'm stoked that if I wreck, I'll be able to pop out and get away from my bike instead of being stuck to it. If this was interesting to you, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, ask down in the comments below. It's been quite a journey, so thanks for coming along with me, and as always, stay shreddy.